What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to give you some ways you can condition your body to get ready for skiing. Now I post a lot of ski workouts, like strength training, plyos, all that stuff, but today I wanted to give you some ways that you can do some conditioning to prepare for skiing. I posted a video a little bit ago about um, a workout that you can do at the gym to build a good aerobic base for skiing, but I wanna give you some other options, some more traditional forms of cardio that you can do that'll help you tremendously. So before I get started, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I post new videos every Tuesdays and Thursdays, so make sure you're subscribed to catch all of them. So when it comes to skiing, most of the time we're working at a range from 30 seconds to 90 seconds, give or take. Obviously there's gonna be times where you're less or where you're more, uh, but generally speaking, it's gonna be 30 to 90 seconds. So we're really gonna be stressing that muscular endurance system, uh, that lactate threshold system, all those things, anaerobic, lactic, anaerobic, alactic, um, lactic power, that type of stuff. So you really wanna be working and training your body to withstand all this within 30 to 90 seconds. Now there's a lot of ways that we can train our body to do so, which I'm gonna get into in one second. But when I say you wanna work on that lactic threshold training, that's gonna be about 70 to 80% of your VO2 max for trained people. And then for untrained people, that'll fall at about 50 to 60% of your VO2 max. Now, if you don't know your VO2 max, that is completely fine. I don't know what mine is, never tested it. Frankly, I don't really care what it is. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is very simply, work at high intensities for about 30 to 90 seconds. Anywhere between there, high intensity, that's gonna give you your most bang for your buck. That's what's gonna translate best to skiing. So the reason we wanna work in that lactate threshold, and I'm sure all of you have felt this before if you have skied, after a little bit, your muscles start to burn. You feel it really quickly and then they start to fatigue. And the common misconception here is that we're building up lactic acid and that's what's causing our muscles to fatigue and to tire. But what's actually happening is metabolic acidosis. So our muscles are becoming more acidic and the lactate is coming to essentially clear out and buffer the buildup of hydrogen ions. So for all of those people who have no idea what I just said, Lactate's a good thing, and it's trying to help our muscles out. But what we wanna do is um, delay that onset. So if our body starts producing lactate to help clear out, to help minimize the acidity of our muscles, if our body starts doing that after 10 seconds, we wanna train at that level, at that onset, so that we can push it more to the right, so that before you know it, your body's gonna start doing that at 15 seconds, which means you have more work time, you can go longer before your muscle starts to fatigue and become um, more acidic. So that's our goal here, we wanna train in that area. So if you don't know your VO2 max, that's completely fine. I don't know mine, I don't train at it. I just know the time frame that I should be training at a high intensity. So there's many different things we can do. We can do hill sprints, which are amazing at this. We can do treadmill sprints, any type of sprints really, even at the soccer field, wherever it is, just going on a run with some intervals. Um, you can do bike sprints. Bike sprints are so good at working towards your lactate threshold. As soon as you start to feel that onset, um, when you start to feel that accumulation, that burning in your muscles, bikes are amazing for that. Just hike up the resistance, go for about 30 seconds, and trust me, you're gonna be feeling that. And when you do it for a little bit, that'll start to delay the onset of lactate in your muscles, which is gonna be a good thing for skiing. You're gonna feel that fatiguing happening much later. Another thing we can do, if you don't wanna be doing this traditional cardio, if you don't wanna do sprints, uh, whether it's on your legs or on the bike, you can switch up things for your workout. If you notice on my workouts, all the time when I'm doing different things, I put in tempos and I do similar holds to what we will be seeing in skiing. So for example, if I'm doing a trap bar, let's say I do a trap bar with a five second isometric hold for five reps. We're working for about 30 seconds per set just with the trap bar right there. So that's gonna start building up our muscular endurance. That's gonna help our body become really efficient at delaying the start of um, producing lactate. So that's gonna be awesome, just adding in tempos, check out some of those workouts if you want some ideas. Another thing you can do is make, let's say like four exercises in a series. So for the first group of exercises, instead of just doing one thing, do four things that fall in line with the goal you're trying to attain and then rest after. So you're gonna get some of that muscular endurance, you're gonna get some of that cardio in there as well. Now, a lot of people like to combine strength training, power training with cardio. For example, doing like power cleans or hang cleans, something like that for like 10, 15 reps, and it's like, oh, that's how I'm gonna get my cardio in. 
I really dislike that. I do not like combining strength training or power training with cardio. I think they're two separate things that need to be trained separately because your quality is going to dip and you're not getting the adaptations that that exercise was designed for. If you like to do it though, more power to you. You can do whatever you want. Just make sure your quality is good. Um, personally, for me though, I don't like to do that. But that being said, at the end of a workout, if you want to get some functional cardio in, you can easily do like box jumps or jump rope, something like that, where it's more functional. Uh, typically, you would think of that as power doing box jumps and that type of stuff, but you can set it up to be cardio. So that would be awesome as well. Just as long as you're doing something high intensity for about 30 to 90 seconds, and then you want your work to rest ratio to be about one to two, one to three. So if I'm working for 30 seconds, then I'm probably gonna take off about 45 seconds to a minute and then get going back. You wanna give your body enough time to recover, but you also wanna make sure that your body is understanding the energy demand that you are gonna be placing it in. Because when we're skiing, if we're going for 30 seconds and then we feel the burn, we stop, we're not just gonna chill up on the mountain for like two minutes just sipping on some hot cocoa in the middle. Like you're gonna stop for maybe 10 seconds, get your legs back and you're gonna go again. So you wanna make sure you're training the exact same energy systems and the demands that you will need up on the mountain. That's the ultimate goal with training, just making what you wanna do in your sport much more um, efficient, your body much more efficient at doing it and make it better and easier for you out there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I post new videos every Tuesdays and Thursdays, so make sure you're subscribed to catch all of them. I'll see you guys in the next one.